this video, we will delve into another branch of pharmaceutics, that is biopharmaceutics. But before getting into business, let me ask you these questions. The first one is, suppose that we have a solution of the same drug given in an oral form and an injection form. What do you think about the amount of the drug in the bloodstream after one minute? Do you think more drug would be present in the blood circulation after injection, injecting the solution or after having the oral one? My second question is similar to the first, but for another scenario. That is, having the same drug in three different dosage forms, a capsule, a tablet, and a suspension. What do you think about the amount of the drug in the circulation after one minute of taking each of these dosage forms? Now suppose we have the same dosage form and the same route of administration but different drug substances. Which one you think would get into the bloodstream faster and in higher concentration? Well. Except for the IV route of administration, where the drug substance is directly injected into the blood circulation, any other route would present the drug in a certain site within the body, that is, the administration site, and the drug needs to have a short or long journey through the blood circulation to the site of action where it exerts its effect. So let me track with you the journey of the drug substance via this simple scheme. We all know that drugs come in different dosage forms and taken via various routes of administration. And in order for the drug to get from the start of administration to the bloodstream, it has to be liberated from the dosage form and cross many membranes. This is called absorption. Well now the drug is in the bloodstream and within blood there are plasma proteins that might have affinity to bond with certain drugs. So some drugs might not be found freely circulating in blood but bound to plasma proteins which makes their distribution different. The free drug, while circulating in blood, usually succeeds in reaching the site of action and exert its intended effect, but it might also get or be distributed in another fluid, like lymph. At certain point, the body gets rid or eliminates the drug, either as such through excretion process or after metabolizing or changing the drug into other derivatives by a process called metabolism. This is a very simple representation of what happens to the drug inside the body or in other words, what the body does to the drug that is termed pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics is very important for knowing how much is there in blood and how long it takes the drug to get there and for how long it will be there. Shortly, for knowing the rate and extent of drug absorption or what is termed bioavailability. There are many concepts related to biopharmaceutics and biopharmaceutical properties we've touched a few like pharmacokinetics and bioavailability but there are many others. In this video we intended to define biopharmaceutics which didn't happen to the moment. Yet after mentioning all the previous information it's now easier to call out the biopharmaceutics definition, which is the study of the effect of the physicochemical properties of drugs, dosage forms, and routes of administration on the rate and extent of drug absorption. 
All the details about biopharmaceutics and biopharmaceutical properties will be discussed in the biopharmaceutics series. For now, this is quite enough as an introduction to this topic. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Here is a quick recap of what has been said earlier. Don't forget to leave your comments down below and continue learning through Dr. Siddiqui Stay fabulous wherever you are.